Hey guys, it's happening. So, back with this laptop. So, I was doing some work the other day. Um, I had previously done like a wireless upgrade, 6 upgrade on this laptop. And when I was on site to go do some roaming testing with this new uh, on a hotel, a hotel wireless upgrade, my battery died. So if I unplug it, it says 0%, doesn't charge. It's weird, I'm not even getting a... Like, it just doesn't charge. So as soon as I unplug it, it's gonna, it'll gonna die, watch. Not that it's not a good thing to do to a laptop. Um, or any sort of <laughs> operating system, but... So every time I had to pull my power out to go and uh, roam around, I couldn't roam, I couldn't roam around to uh, test the access points. So I had to take my 6C adapter out of this laptop, put it on one of my other laptops, and test with that laptop. It wasn't even my preferred laptop, it's a smaller laptop. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bugged about that. So I think this, I bought this battery probably, I guess a couple years ago. On, uh, it's like a replacement battery a couple years ago on, uh, I think, eBay. And, but I'm going to get her out of here real fast. Yeah, let's see if I can. Some of this thing's actually kind of had to get out of here. It doesn't really fit. So it is an aftermarket battery. So, um, yeah, this laptop is probably, I've had it for a long, long time. But, um, all right, so I'll show you how to uh, break this thing up and I'll test the cells. So I actually bought another one, but it was actually the wrong one. So I'm thinking maybe like, the, the, it's different. The shape is different. Even though it's supposed to be for this laptop, I should find that I might even have the original battery down here. I keep all my nah, it's for a different kind. Right. Yeah, I, I usually keep all my cells. So uh, in case like I ever get a bad cell, I can I can use a cell out of it. So let me uh, hook this up my camera, my tripod, and I'll see if I can break it open for you guys. So usually the easiest way to break it open is just to twist it. Break the glue. You know, when you buy these things on uh, on eBay, I'm assuming, I'm guessing, there's a strong possibility that these things are actually like not even they're new, they're like used cells. What I'm looking for is to see if there's any broken contacts. I see a broken contact right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my multimeter out and uh, I'm going to test the individual cells. See there's actually a dead cell. But I mean, I don't know if I actually broke that contact when I, uh, it broke on its own or if I broke it by twisting it back and forth like that. So that's why I'm going to test the individual cells by multimeter. So, uh, I need to figure out how these are actually positioned. Okay, so let's turn the multimeter on, DC mode. And we'll just test individual cells. 4.2, 4.2. Like one day this thing was actually working and then it wasn't working. So. This cell definitely seems like it has some sort of issue with it. 
the center one, the one that was disconnected. I mean, it might just be so severely discharged. So this thing right here is called a battery management board. And it basically will fail the, usually will fail the charging if it detects a bad cell. I mean, this isn't the factory, so I don't know if this is as, it's as sophisticated as the factory one. I know, like, even like when Makita, I've made several Makita repair videos, Makita battery repair for tools. And on the Makita batteries, they actually have a thing where which will fail the, if it detects a bad, bad cell, then it will automatically disable the whole pack. And you can never, like, recharge again. It's like a permanent flash. It permanently disables the whole battery, battery pack. So you can never do it again. So once it fails a couple charges, it disables the whole pack permanently. Like, there's no recovery. You can't recover the, uh, uh, I guess you could reflash the chip itself, but, um, all right, so I gotta go back and uh, I'm gonna solder that thing on there and see if I can get any sort of response out of it. All right, so the way it looks to me, it looks like you have three different cell groups, one, two, three, right? So you have your ground of the very last cell, and then you're taking individual readings per cell. So this white wire is testing these this bank, so they're in each, uh, th three banks of two. So this one's testing this bank, this blue one is testing uh, this bank right here. The red is testing this bank. Because they're supposed to be connected, that's why it's here and not here. All right, so I'm not going to fully uh, put it back together until I know that's a fix. I'm just going to snap temporarily back together, put it on my laptop. I guess I could test it. On the, on the board, it gave me test points. So if this doesn't actually work, I'll go back and do some other stuff. So that's a battery light right there. Plugged in. Okay. Like I said, it, every, everything looked good before. It just would What's weird though is for a while it was flashing red, like it wasn't charging. Um, like it would do this and then it started flashing red, like it was a failed battery. But then it stopped doing that, so I don't know. All right, let's fire this back up. I'm hoping. All right, so plug it back to the laptop here getting the zero percent charge i might let it go for a second I mean, it was very low the charge so um because of the way the batteries are each of those banks should be 3.6 volt so each cell should be about 3.6 volt but because they were in parallel um you know it's still gonna be 3.6 volt it's just gonna give you more capacity you know you know, the right, same so thing's been sitting for 15 20 minutes so i should have at least seen something by now so like i said it could have bad cell packs so i'm gonna take this back out all right, so what I was yeah. saying is sometimes if a cell pack is too discharged, it, it won't uh, it won't even actually uh, register. So half a volt, right? You can see it in the... Actually, bring this down so you can see it. So the first group is half a volt. Second group is half a volt and 1.4 volt but what's weird though is I'm getting reverse polarity on the uh, on this group the middle groups give me reverse polarity So when they're stacked like this all together, they're basically in uh, series. So it's parallel and then series. I don't know if that makes sense. Parallel, parallel, parallel. The whole bank is series. So in theory, if I were to go from the ground to the positive here, that should normally be like 11 or so, so volts, right? The whole pack. It's almost like I'm getting reverse polarity on that one pack. All right, I'm going to charge the individual cells with my charge over here. And then uh, we'll see if I can get it to come back to life here. So, because I know it's supposed to be 3.6 volt per pack. Um, sometimes what happens is the BCM will disable the pack if there's too low. Like, these cells might be permanently damaged. If you go below a certain voltage, it damages the cells. Whereas a NICAD battery is the opposite. You, you want to totally discharge the cell before you recharge it. Or you get the memory. Um battery charger connected and a cool thing is it interfaces with my computer so 
um, I can set the charge profile. So this thing can do like lead acid, it can do lipo and nickel metal hydrate, uh, NICADs, pretty cool charger. Um, so I'm gonna hook up the alligator clips here to the ground. And the ones are positive. I mean, most people might not have all this stuff on their desk. So uh, I guess you could do kind of like a dummy charger, I guess, but um, I mean, this is just going through what I have to go through to fix it. So um, I'm going to do 0.100 milliamp. Uh, I'm going to do a slow charge because it's so, I, I don't want to jack it up, um, send a lot of voltage to it, like a lot of current because it's, I want to recover these things. So um, it's not going to, I'm going to do a very slow charge, 100 milliamps. All right, start. Uh-oh. Sometimes if the voltage is too low, it might think that it's, um, all right, so can't get it to go with the LiPo profile, but I'm going to go with a NICAD profile. And the NICAD profile is 1.2 volt max, still same, 100 milliamp. But my th issue is, I think because the voltage is so low, it's failing the pack, failing the cells. So I'm going to let it hit, hit this thing for, you know, like a lower, low, low, current, low voltage, just to get it up to enough to where it might charge on the, the not LiPo, but the lithium ion setting. Now the, the setting, the reason why you want the setting is because it will, it's a smart charger, so it will turn off and it gets a 3.6 volts. So I might hit that for a couple minutes and see if I can uh, get to come back to life and uh, hopefully not blow up my test bench here. So a couple minutes on that dummy setting, probably <clears throat> Let it go for like 20 minutes. Um, all right, went back to the uh, lithium ion. And it didn't fail. So that's a good sign. Um, all right, I guess I'm doing a super low current, so 100 milliamp. And this should actually stop. When, if it can get up to 3.6 volt, this will stop. I mean, this is, I'm just kind of messing around. I mean, I don't have to... <laughs> I mean, a new battery costs 15, 20 bucks. Um, plus, I have this extra cell pack I can just take apart and use. Most likely, you can probably use the same connector, the same uh, <coughs> same BCM. Maybe a little, uh, looks like the same. So, I mean, worst case scenario, I just take this whole pack out and move it over to this different case. All right, so this video is going to span multiple days just because it takes so long to charge it. I think this took uh, 27,984 seconds to charge. Uh, capacity 740, 748 milliamp hours, I guess. Um, voltage 411. All right, so that was the first bank here. So this is the second bank is the one that was broken, and uh, which I'm a little more concerned about because it seemed like it was reverse polarity. Um, all right, so I'm going to hit that second bank and see if I can get it to go. All right, so I separated these two cells again here. I desoldered the one I resoldered on there. So that cell is actually the one that's reverse polarity. So in theory, I could maybe recover it if I hit it with some voltage and the right polarity. But the cell is probably damaged. Um, yeah, there's actually a term for it. I forget that it's online if you look it up. But um, so I'm going to take that cell out and then... Uh, see if I can recover these cells right here but yeah I, I mean I could like I said I mean it's I mean you, you run the risk of kind of blowing the battery up you know what I mean if you have the reverse polarity so it makes me a little nervous since I'm not going to be around today so I got that um, cell in there doesn't look pretty that, oh, I'm not drinking how old that cell is actually um, help able to hold a charge let's see what happens alright so uh, same thing I had to put the thing on NICAD mode just to get it to go so I kind of give it like a base charge. That way it doesn't air on the LiPo. But another way you could call if you had like a bent power supply, you could do it there. Um, I, could, I just set it like, like one volt and lower the current down. Um, and then kind of give it like a base charge. That way it doesn't fail. Like most smart chargers will actually fail a battery if it's below a certain voltage. All right, so I charged the, the cell pack last night on the charger. And uh, let me show what a, a working one is supposed to look like. So... It will actually tell you what the voltage is pretty much right on the label. Like 11 something some volts. Um, show you this real fast. So, uh, 
new new one of the ASIC cell pack. It's a uh, there we go, 11.34 volt, and then on mine, this one right here, Y6. I mean, it has a fresh charge. It's 11.84. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not, I'm not gonna. You probably putting this back in the pack, even though this will probably work perfectly fine. I'm probably gonna end up using this thing because I'm not gonna use this battery. So, but I'm gonna put that back in and see if it fixes it. But so far, the only thing I've seen the problem was just this one cell had a reverse polarity. It was so dead uh, that the polarity was reversed. But you know what you can do? I mean, you can recover these things, these reverse polarity ones. I mean, what, you need to severely discharge this thing to the point where there's no. It doesn't show any sort of voltage, so you could hook up to like an incandescent light bulb or some kind of light bulb, right? Um, that would discharge it so much that you could put it back in the right polarity again. But I mean, usually when it's just that discharge, they're, they're kind of damaged. So yeah, these things are probably are severely diminished because they were so severely discharged. Um, all right, let me. Uh, I'm gonna put that back in the pack and we'll put it back in the laptop and see if it charges. All right, so in theory, because I have a charge in this, on this battery, it should, I should be able to fire this thing up, you know, because it has a pretty decent charge. I mean, if I, this thing actually works, I might I'll put it back together the right way. Don't know what's going to happen here. All right, so like I said, at this point, I don't know, because I don't know if the, the BCM, I, BC, it could be called BMS, BCM. Yeah, you know, battery control module, battery management system. Um, aha! Right now I have no power connected to it now. Power is disconnected. Well, it worked for a second. Okay. All right. We didn't like that. I was about to hook into power, so go into Windows. Hopefully, this video is not too boring. All right, so it says it's zero percent still. So, what's weird is, like I said, you saw it when I first powered it on, like it wanted to go. Um, but I don't know if this showed this last time. Four hours and thirty-one minutes to fully charge. So I'm gonna let it sit here for a while and see what actually charges. Um, like I said, I'm just kind of playing around with this. I mean, these I, I can get a new battery for under twenty bucks. It's not <laughs> like I said. It's not the, the amount of time I'm putting in this to play around with it. You know, it's not really. It's more of just like a hobby. It's fun. That's actually yeah. hilarious. It actually moved one percent. I haven't seen that for a while. Um, so that makes me think that, I'll come back, but it makes me think that the battery management controller is actually working still. Um, that's, like I said, that's always my concern is that on the actual board, on there, there's a flash chip, like a memory chip, that will, that will permanently disable the battery if it finds a bad cell. So the cells might be fine, but the, the, the controller chip that communicates with the charging uh, the charging circuit will permanently disable the battery. Alright, I'm gonna let this go and see how it goes. Give it a couple hours. Alright, it's another day here, and so it did charge. I and mean, what's weird is because I almost pretty much had fully charged it manually, um, it, it actually went to 100% really fast. It, like, it went from like 10% to like 100. It just skipped up. It was kind of weird. And see, but let's do the true test here. Unplug the power. See what happens.